Hey YouTube, Roy Marco with Roy Marco's Garage. Today we got my C50. We're going to uh, do some upgrades today on the uh, cooling system, water pump, some hoses, uh, heater hoses, and make it a little more reliable. I got to go pick up the truck box that's out in our draw so I don't get a breakdown. So let's get to it. First things first, got to turn the truck around, face the garage. So as you can see, I, uh, I took a pressure washer and cleaned up a lot of the grease and stuff off this engine like you can see here in this video. And uh, a few things that need to happen under this engine bay, I gotta fix the battery tray. I got another one on order, but it's like four weeks away, so I'm waiting for that. Um, I got a coolant leak on the water pump, just dripping out a little bit of the weep hole. And it's got a corrugator hose on top, which I'd like to get rid of. I wanna change the uh, heater hoses. And we'll go through and do that. So, I'll show you what I got. Well, parts box, I got a brand new water pump, but inside at the shop we got a few pieces. This is a pinion seal that will eventually get in, don't worry about that today. These are the uh, two piece of heater hose, 5 eighths to a quarter. Got a new lower rad hose here. Got the gaskets and plugs and stuff for the water pump. New hose clamps for everything. Paint, paint the water pump, same color as what's on the engine. I got some bulbs that go up in the top for the cab lights and of course the water pump itself. So I'll get this one apart, make sure we're the right depth and then we'll uh, paint this one up and get in. Okay so the first thing I do is remove the fan and it's uh, you got to get a wrench in here, you got the cowl for the... Yeah. So I can get these bolts loose, get this fan off. Then we'll drain the coolant. Alright, so I just get the last bolt out here. You have to, it has a spacer and the bolts are so long that you have to kind of take them all out in the unit. You gotta be a little bit of a contortionist. There we go. So careful not to poke the rad. Find out one piece, so all these bolts and everything have to come out together with it. Probably the hardest part of the job. There's a spacer, and then uh, we'll put that aside. We'll loosen off the alternator, get the belts off, the pulley off, and drain the coolant. Get all these off here. Of course, while this is all off, I'm going to take the opportunity to clean out all the mud beside the pulley. Just loosening off the clamps here. I got so many things to do, like um, these fuel line, that's the next thing to do. And um, valve cover gaskets and battery cables. But right now we're just going to focus on this. Okay, so on these uh, heater hoses, you could loosen them off, but I don't want to put any twisting action and cause any problems with my heater core. So I'm just going to take and cut the old hoses off since I'm going to replace them. And then we will take out the clamps. And then once the clamps are off, we'll slice them so we don't put any stress on the, on the heater core. So what you do in an old car like this so you don't wreck the uh, heater core, take off your clamps this way. Okay, once you get it cut, you can peel the hose off and not damage or put twisting force on the heater core, which will cause a leak. Okay, just like that. So I'm four more bolts away and this water pump is off. Try to 
take apart new trucks and bolts aren't even as nice as this. Okay, water pump is out. So here's the water pump. We're gonna pull it out of the bag here. Now, while I was at the store, I went ahead and got a new fitting uh, for the uh, coolant hose, so that um, I don't have to worry about trying to get this one out. If it's rusted in there, you may have trouble. So it's always a good idea to get a new one. So hopefully that'll work out. Also, uh, there's a plug on the top here, and we just have to compare that the water pump is the same height, which it is. And so now that I know that all this is right, we're going to give this a coat of paint and throw it on the truck. Also, before I give it a coat of paint, I'm going to put some thread sealant on here and uh, thread sealant on this plug and tighten them down. Okay, so I got the uh, plugs and the piece in the water pump. If you notice, I ended up using the old stuff. Um, this here, you need a socket to get on here and it's too close to the edge, so that wouldn't work anyway. And I didn't have a big enough Allen key to put this uh, plug in, so I ended up going with that one. So, no big deal. Um, we're all ready for some paint. I got some GM blue here. I'll give it a shot and then we'll get it on the truck. I'll do the back side first. Once in a while I get a, a Lucy blue. That's all that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I just painted the bolts for the water pump to go in too, and I just poked them through this container or piece of cardboard, give them a shot of paint, put them out in the sun here, they'll be dry enough I can handle and get them in. Okay, so I just got former gasket here. I don't normally use this, but just to hold the gasket in place on the water pump, I'll just put a little bit around here, and a little bit here. Okay. And, uh, not a lot, just a little bit to hold the gasket, so we just want to put a gasket here. And we'll put this gasket down here like this. They come with the same gasket, this part we can just cut off if we want, so I'll just take a razor and maybe do that. But if I just set that down, it'll uh, put the gasket in place, so when I go to put the bolts in, the gaskets aren't falling off. Another thing to note on a small block Chevy is that uh, the water pump bolts go into water jackets on a couple of them. So it's a good idea to use, I use this thread sealant, Loctite 567, it's a big container, uh, just to put into the bolts so that when they go in, they, uh, you don't have a coolant leak through the threads of the bolt. Just get a couple of bolts started through here. One on the opposite side, and you, if you see, I got that gasket in place. Lower hose on. Lower hose, you see that there. Got uh, the heater hoses on, new heater hoses. Water pump, pulleys on, belts are on. I went ahead and changed this vacuum line too. The old one was all cracked. They used a uh, half inch fuel line for that, so it's got a little more support. The only thing that bothers me now is this fuel line, which I'd like to eventually go all metal, but down here is a 3 8 line, and up here is a 5 16 line, because two barrel carburetor, but it's 3 8 uh, coming out of the fuel pump. So the difference could be made up in the hose. I'm going to bend up a new 3 8 line, so we just have the one fuel filter, so I'm going to do that. And uh, yeah, just ready to put coolant in here, got a brand new rad cap. So all the coolant stuff will be done except for this ugly corrugated hose on the top. So here it is, got the fuel line in. I just bent up a piece of line, steel line, 3 8 to go into the hose there and to the filter, go out to the carburetor. I'm making a mess. I'll chase this with a full jug of water, it's concentrated, then I'll top it up with the old coolant, strain it. Old coal is pretty clean, so get to it. Okay, what I got here is a rag and a funnel 
just because there's floating chunks of whatever in this antifreeze. This antifreeze is, is clean and good. So I'm just running it through the cloth to uh, funnel out the junk and then it's still usable. Well, here we got it topped up and now uh, everything's good. There's no leaking. Nice and dry, close string. It's working good. Now that we got it all warmed up, we can do an oil change. Oh, wow. Come on. That's way too tight for a filter. All right. It's so hot. Oil pan is hot. The pipes are hot. Burning my hands here. Trying to hold the camera. Okay, give that a little spin and leak down. Oh, I made the pan. It hasn't been done in. Well, the truck sat for 10 years. It doesn't mean that. Uh, but yeah, it's got some old oil in there. The nice thing about this truck, the way the mounts are situated, I can pull this oil pan out quite easily. And I might change the pan because it looks like this is a pan. There might have been a rod or something thrown and they welded it back up. It's all beat up, so yeah, I might put a new oil pan on this truck one day. Here, cut it. You got it. So I'm just filling up the filter. Uh, I know they tell you not to do this anymore, but oh, I'm no. a believer in having this. Uh, Absolutely. Always fill the filter. Good thing. Yeah, the new uh, filters are coming out. They're saying do not fill right on the side. Do not re refill. They just want you to have engine problems down the road. Okay, I'm going to grab the right oil filter this time. The last one was for a 440 Dodge. And, but that's okay. I didn't put oil in it, so I didn't wreck anything. Got the old filter out. Made a nice big mess. Anyway, clean that up. Get the new filter in. When you're putting on a filter, you want it to make contact, and then I like to tighten it by hand, almost as tight as I can go, then back it off a little bit just to keep the o-ring good, and then just give it another tighten by hand, and it should be a hand tighter, just go back and forth like that there. There we go. I'll crack that loose. Then. set the pan up here. It's kind of a windy day and uh, when you're draining oil and wind just makes a mess so I'm just gonna pop this drain plug out of here. Oh, yeah. There we go. Drain that oil. Well, cooler now we can get this drain plug in. I also put a new gasket on here that's copper instead of a Nylon one. So the plug in. There we go. Perfect. All right. Let's get some new oil in. Dump some clean oil in here. Truck will be happy to get a nice clean oil change. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay, now that the oil's in, we'll just check the uh, the dipstick. Let's see if we have enough in here. I put five liters. It should be. Good. Usually these engines hold four and a half liters. Stick there. There we go. Perfect. Just just right above the full line. So there we go. We got a full full of oil there. Did the oil change. All the uh, changed the rad cap, the water pump, the hoses. Just except for this upper hose. I got to find an upper hose for it. I haven't done that yet. 
Um, changed out this one fuel line. It's not permanent, but at least it'll be better than having that other one that was dangling around there near the fan. So yeah, uh, there you have it. Uh, there's a the truck. You can see it runs good now, and uh, we can use it to go pick up the truck box. So yeah, this here is the truck box I showed you guys earlier. I'm just gonna try with the ratchet first, see if I can undo the bolts. They're kind of rusty. If not, I'll use a generator and a grinder. We'll cut all the bolts, get the box ready, and then uh, we'll bring the truck out and lift it on. See, it looks like the bolt's turning, so I'm gonna have to cut the bolts. Okay, I'll have to solve all those. At least I know I can do that. Okay, here it is. I got the box. It has to go up, but uh, that's the box on the truck. So that's with the 44 and a half inches cut out of the chassis. There's a little bit of a gap there between the cab and the box. It would have been nice to cut another inch and a half out, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that now. The uh, I'll measure the wheelbase so you guys know the wheelbase of this. And if you want, I can give you an desi a desired wheelbase so you have it. The box has to come up exactly five inches, so uh, that's what I'm working on. Okay, so there you have it. I got everything in the truck, the water pump, all the coolant hoses, got the box picked up from our draw since now we just have to mount it. Uh, I noticed the heater core started to drip a little bit, so I'm going to have to put a new heater core in. That'll be another video, as well as getting that box lifted up and getting the seat mounted. So anyway, if you like these videos, please subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and have a great day.